Okay, tutorial number 4, defining in++, lesson 6. In this lesson, we add dynamic thread creation and termination to IMP, and while doing so, we learn how to define and use configurations whose structure can evolve dynamically. Recall that the intended semantics of spawn of S is to spawn a new concurrent thread that executes S. The new thread is being passed at creation time its parent's environment, so it can share with its parent the memory locations that its parent had access to at creation time. No other locations can be shared, and no other memory sharing mechanism is available. The parent and the child threads can evolve unrestricted. In particular, they can change their environments by declaring new variables or shadowing existing ones, can create other threads, and so on. The above suggests that each thread should have its own computation and its own environment. This can be elegantly achieved if we group the k and n cells in a thread cell in the configuration. Since at any given time during the execution of a program there could be zero, one or more instances of such a thread cell in the configuration, it is a good idea to declare the thread cell with multiplicity star, which means zero, one or more instances. This multiplicity declaration is not necessary, but it is a good idea to do it for several reasons. 1. It may help the configuration abstraction process, which may in turn significantly increase the compactness and modularity of your subsequent rules. 2. It may help various analysis and execution tools, for example static analyzers to give you error messages when you create cells where you are not supposed to, or k-compilers to improve performance by starting actual concurrent hardware threads or processes corresponding to each cell instance. And 3. It may help you better understand and control the dynamics of your configuration, and thus your overall semantics. For good encapsulation, I admittedly subjectively also prefer to put all thread cells into one cell, threads. This is totally unnecessary here. To convince yourself that this is indeed true, you can remove this cell once we are done with the semantics and everything will work without having to make any changes. Before we continue, let us compile and k-run some programs that used to work, say samio.imp. In spite of the relatively radical configuration reorganization, those programs execute just fine. How is that possible? In particular, why do rules like the lookup and assignment still work unchanged in spite of the fact that the k and m cells are not at the same level with the store cell in the configuration anymore. Welcome to Configuration Abstraction, Part 2. Recall that the role of Configuration Abstraction is to allow you to only write the relevant information in each rule, and have the compiler fill in the obvious and boring details. According to the configuration that we declared for our new language, there is only one reasonable way to complete rules like the lookup, namely to place the k and n cells inside the thread cell inside the threads cell. This is the most direct, compact and local way to complete the configuration context of the lookup rule. If for some reason you want it here to match the k cell of one thread and the n cell of another thread, then you would need to explicitly tell k so by mentioning the two thread cells, one including a k cell and the other including the nth cell. By default, k completes rules in a greedy style. Think this way, what is the minimal number of changes to my rule to make it fit the declared configuration? That's what a K tool will do. Configuration abstraction is technically unnecessary, but once you start using it and get a feel for how it works, you will fall in love with it. It allows you to focus on the essentials of your semantics, and at the same time gives you flexibility in changing the configuration later on without having to touch the rules. For example, it allows you to remove the threads cell from the configuration, if you don't like it, without having to touch any rule. We are now ready to give the semantics a spawn.
Node configuration abstraction at work, again. Taking into account the declared configuration, and in particular the multiplicity information star in the thread cell, the only reasonable way to complete the rule above is to wrap the k and n cells on the first line within a thread cell and to fill in the dot dot dots in the child thread with the default contents of the other subcells in thread. In this case there are no other cells, so we can get rid of those dot dot dots. But that would decrease the modularity of this rule. Indeed, we may later on add other cells within thread as the language evolves, for example a function or an exception stack. In theory, we should be able to write the rule above even more compactly and modularly, namely to get rid of the thread cell altogether. Unfortunately, this currently does not work in the K tool, due to some known limitations of the current configuration abstraction algorithm. This latter rule would be more modular, because it would not even depend on the cell name, thread. For example, we may later decide to change the name thread into agent and would not have to touch this rule. We hope this current limitation will be eliminated soon. Once a thread terminates, its computation cell becomes empty. When that happens, we can go ahead and remove the useless thread cell. Let's see what we've got. Compile and krun spawn.imp Not the following. The thread cell is empty, so all threads terminated normally. The value printed is different from the value in the store. The store value is not even the one obtained if the threads executed sequentially. Therefore, interesting behaviors may happen. We would like to see them all. Based on prior experience with krun search, we would hope that krun spawn.imp minus minus search shows all the behaviors. However, the above does not work for two reasons. First, sum.imp is an interactive program which reads a number from the standard input. When analyzing program 6 hostively using the search option, krun has to disable the streaming capabilities. Just think about it and you'll realize why. The best you can do in terms of interactivity with search is to pipe some input to Keran. Keran will flush the standard input buffer into the cells connected to it when creating initial configuration. And it will do that no matter whether you run it with or without the search option. For example, echo 23 pipe Keran spawn.imp minus minus search puts 23 in the standard input buffer which is then transferred in the in cell as a list item and then the exhaustive search procedure is invoked. Second, even after piping some input, the spawn.im program still manifests only one behavior, which does not seem right. There should be many more. Like with the superheat and supercool options discussed in lesson 3, by default compile optimizes the generated model for execution. In particular, it does not insert any backtracking markers where transition attempts should be made, so krun lacks the information it needs to exhaustively search the generated language model. Like with the other options, we also have to explicitly tell compile which rules should be considered as actual transitions. A theoretically correct but practically infeasible approach to search all possible behaviors is to consider all rules as transitions. Even more than in the case of superheating and supercooling, such a naive solution would make the number of behaviors and thus krun explode. Remember that a two-threaded program with 150 statements each manifests more behaviors than particles in the known universe. Consequently, unless your multi-threaded programs are very small, you will most likely want to control which rules should be considered transitions and which should not. A good rule of thumb is to include as transitions only those rules which compete for behaviors. That is, those rules which may yield a different behavior if we choose to apply them when other rules match as well. The rule for addition, for example, is a clear example of a rule which should not be a transition. Indeed, 3 plus 7 will rewrite to 10 now and also later. On the other hand, the lookup rule should be a transition. Indeed, if we delay the lookup of variable x, then uh, other threads may write x in the meanwhile with an increment or an assignment rule, and thus yield a different behavior. Let us take those rules which should be transitions. 
look up an increment need to be transitions. They may be already tagged because they happen to also be super cool rules. The read rule needs to also be a transition because it may compete with other instances of itself in other threads. Assignment needs to also be a transition and so should be the first rule for print. Let us now compile with the transition option set as desired. Now echo 23 pipe to k run spawn imp minus minus search gives us all 10 behaviors of the spawn program. It is highly non-trivial to say precisely which rules need to be transitions, so kRun makes no attempt to automatically detect it. Instead, it provides the functionality to let you decide it. In the next lesson, we wrap up and document the definition of imp++.